Monopoly is a classic board game known around the world and you've probably played it at some point. But what few people know is that there's more maths involved in Monopoly than you might think. So today we're going to take a look at what you can do to improve your chances of winning next time you play. To quickly set the scene, in Monopoly our aim is simply to get as much return on our money as possible by buying properties, houses and hotels and in doing so try to bankrupt the other players. The properties are divided into eight sets, as well as railroads and utilities. And as you go around the board, the properties get more expensive, but you also receive higher rent if another player lands on them. Our goal is to work out which property set is best. As an example, let's say we were to buy the yellows and build two houses on each of them. If you're new to Monopoly or need a reminder, you need to own a whole set to develop houses and you have to build them evenly across the properties. We can work out how much the properties cost us and the cost of six houses at, for the yellows, £150 per house. The corresponding rent is shown on the cards. Now, if we assume that in the long run, a player has a one in 40 chance of landing on any given square, then our expected rent each time a player rolls the dice is simply the sum of the rents divided by 40. From this, we can calculate the expected number of rolls for us to break even on our investment which in this case is about 67. Note that I say number of rolls instead of number of turns because in Monopoly, if you roll a double, you get to roll again. So you can have several rolls in one turn. Now, if we repeat this calculation for each set and each possible number of houses, we get the following table. Here, you can see the 66.7 we just calculated for the yellow set with two houses. And now if we look at each column to see which set is best for each possible number of houses, we can see that the dark blues have the lowest expected number of rolls to break even for everything up to three houses. And the other sets are quite a way behind. It's really not even close. But then for four houses or a hotel, it's the light blues which are the best investment. However, this isn't the whole story as the probability of us being on a particular square varies from property to property. That is, in the long run, we visit some squares more often than others. And to figure out exactly what's going on, we need to look at an area of maths called Markov chains. So what exactly is a Markov chain? Well, it's simply any system where we move randomly between states and where we go next depends only on where we are now and not on where we have been previously. Let's look at a small example system, which only has two states, A and B. And in this system, if we're at state A and then we take a step, there's a 60% chance that we move to state B and a 40% chance that the step brings us back to A. On the other hand, if we're at B, then we'll move to A with probability 0.9 and stay at B with probability 0.1. We'll use a vector x with two elements to represent the probability distribution of which state we're currently in, where little a and little b represent the probability that we're in state A or B respectively. Next, we have the transition matrix P, which we use to store the probabilities of jumping from one state to another, where the rows correspond to the state we're in and the columns correspond to the state we're moving to. Now, to make use of these, if we want to see the distribution of where we'll be after one step, then we simply multiply X by P. And for the case where we start at A, represented by setting the vector X equal to one zero, this gives us the result we expect. Then, if we want to take a second step in the chain, we can just repeat the process, and we get a 0.7 probability of being at A, and 0.3 probability for B. But what we're interested in is how much time we spend in each state in the long run, and this is described by something called the stationary distribution. This is simply a probability distribution which we can think of as being in equilibrium, so it doesn't change if we take another step, which is what this equation means. Now, we can split this into two simultaneous equations, and we also have the constraint that a plus b equals 1, as we need to be in exactly one of the states. We can then solve these, and we find that a is 0.6 and b equals 0.4, and this is our stationary distribution. That worked well for our example, but if there are more possible states, you get more equations, and the system is harder to solve. And in Monopoly, there are 40 different squares. But thankfully, there is an easier way for us to solve this. Starting from state A, we've already seen the probabilities after the first two steps. But if we carry on beyond that and look at what happens each time, 
we can see a pattern starts to emerge. With each step, the probabilities get closer and closer to those in the stationary distribution, and after six steps, we're within 1% of the actual values. The same thing would happen if we'd started from state B. This is the phenomenon that Markov chains gradually forget where they started and converge to the stationary distribution, as long as a few conditions are met. Firstly, the chain needs to be irreducible. This means we need to be able to get from any state to any other state, which isn't the case in this example here. If we started at A, we would eventually get stuck in either B and C, or in D and E. So in this case, there would actually be two different stationary distributions, one for each of these two areas we could get stuck in, which are called communicating classes, to give them their proper name. So in this case, it isn't unique. Next, it needs to be aperiodic. This chain would fail, because if we started at A, we would keep going in circles, and we know exactly where we would be at each time step. So this chain is periodic with period 3. Finally, if there are infinitely many states, we can run into problems if the system isn't very well behaved, let's say. That's a whole other very interesting area, but we'll save that topic for another time. So, to come back to Monopoly, clearly it is irreducible, as we can always get from any square to any other, not necessarily in one step, but in a few steps we can. It's obviously aperiodic, and it has a finite system space, even if it sometimes doesn't feel that way when you're playing. So, let's see how the probability distribution changes over time. Well, at the start, we're at go. Then, with each step, we move around the board, and the probabilities start to spread out, until, after around 15 steps, the changes become harder and harder to see. And if we jump ahead to the scene after 50 steps, it looks the same, so we've converged to the stationary distribution. But, with the exception of the chance and jail squares, everywhere looks quite similar. So if we remove those from the colour map, we can start to see the differences. The oranges and reds in the top right corner are looking pretty dark, and on the other hand the browns and light blues over on the left side are looking very light, suggesting we don't spend as much time there. Now, let's look at a graph to see exactly what's going on. Well, the spikes here are the jail and chance squares, but it appears to agree with what we saw. The oranges and reds appear to be the highest, and the light blues and browns are definitely the lowest. In fact, the reds and oranges are tied, with both having an average probability of 2.92% for each property in the set. The railroads aren't far behind at 2.86%, but the browns are the worst by far at just 2.17%. So, if we redo our calculations based on this, what difference has it made to our table from earlier? Well, we can see the dark blues are still the best up to two houses, but now it's the oranges which are the best set with three houses or more. The railroads have also improved quite a bit, and they get a comparable return to a set with three houses. Also, there's no need to buy houses for the railroads, but clearly getting the whole set is tricky since there are four of them. So, there we have it. Orange is the best set to go for. That's all for this video. If you made it to the end, congratulations, here's a photo of my dog Thor as a reward. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, or if you have any suggestions for things you'd like to see in future videos, then please pop those in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.